Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a Swift Model 838 telescope. 50 millimeter, 700 millimeters focal length, so it's about an F14. And it is said to be very closely related to a Takahashi. Let's examine that proposition a little bit as we go through this video. Okay, let's pull this out of the box. First of all, it's, uh, it's got some clever packing a strategy to the packing arrangement here. Here are the legs on top. And uh, some nice little boxes and things inside here. There's a little thing for eyepieces and so forth, like that. These little devices come out. Like that. <coughs> the equatorial head is cleverly attached to a little in here, get it out. There Something like that. I probably should have taken the OTA out first. There's the telescope shell. And when you're done, you've got a conglomeration of various pieces and parts. And you probably can't see it in the video, but the triangle is stored up against the inside of the lid, like so. Okay, let's put this little cutie together. Let me show you a few things about the basic operation of this scope. Uh, I love a miniature telescope, especially when they're full featured, when they have all the features of a big telescope. This one doesn't quite match that. Uh, the one thing it doesn't have is remote controls, slow motion controls, um, but other than that it's got a lot of the features of a big telescope. It does have a nice cradle here that, hmm, looks vaguely familiar, looks a little like a Takahashi uh, and operates pretty much like a Takahashi would operate, just like that. The finder looks a lot like a Takahashi, um, except for the paint color perhaps. Uh, almost everything here has a very distinctive Takahashi type feel to it uh, in a small uh, 50 millimeter telescope. Let me show you how the, operate, the uh, scope operates. First of all, it's got a nice, simple, and easy motion. This is meant to be a push-to telescope. That is, you look at something and then as it tracks across the sky, you push it a little bit, push it a little bit, push it a little bit, push it a little bit to follow. Um, and it actually works quite well. The mount is well made, very, very well made. Uh, all I had to do was tear it apart and strip out some of the old grease and re-grease it and it works beautifully. It's smooth as butter. So it's very, very nice, easy to move. So it works in that fashion. I've got a, a, a Zeiss that's similar to that and it's beautiful. It's a very effective um, kind of a strategy. And it makes it a little easier because you're not always looking around and fiddling around. And for a low power telescope view, it's not bad at all. I mean, if you were looking you know, examining the details of the moon at 600 power, that would be a different different situation. It might be more tricky then. Anyway, um, it works quite well. And let's show you a few features. First of all, you can rotate the whole mount around like that. As a matter of fact, I'll show you in a moment the assembly of this thing. This comes right out there if you want. And it's very lightweight. That comes right out of there. Also, like many telescopes, equatorial telescopes, you can reconfigure this to be an Altaz telescope. You lower it down like that, go like that, maybe rotate it like so. It's got an image erecting system here. And now you've got an Altaz telescope. Very, very nice. Let me show you how the image erecting system goes in. Now you have a nice image erect 
type system. Okay, here are the setting circles. They're not super high precision. Okay, let's compare these two telescopes. This is a Takahashi TS50, uh, a very rare telescope. This is about the same era as this one. It's one of the first telescopes that Takahashi made and put their name on it. Uh, this one is probably from the era where Takahashi was still making telescopes and they would have the Swift name attached to them. So this is a Swift and this is a Takahashi. I'm quite certain that they were made by the same folks. They have so many similarities. The focuser, friction device is similar. Uh, everything is very, very similar. All the basic hardware, the finders are quite similar, quite comparable. Um, but the differences will be obvious. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this video was to show you the completely obvious and clear differences. I felt it when I carried the Takahashi into the room, it was at least twice as much, twice as heavy a weight as the little Swift. The little Swift is a beautiful little telescope. Lovely miniature telescope. This is a real telescope. This is the real deal. This is Takahashi. All of you who know Takahashi know quality. And it's got all the very, uh, the famous Takahashi characteristics. It's extremely robust, extremely smooth. Look at the comparison. Compare the size of the um, tripod tops here. This is much beefier, much more robust. The tripod legs are much thicker, heavier, stronger. Uh, everything here, these castings, it's a world of difference here, folks. It's a world of difference. And okay, let's compare the finders. Finders are, I think, quite similar. Look at the clamshell, much, very cute little clamshell. But it's a very different thing than this. You get to this one, look at the clamshell here. This is much, much stronger. Similar style of, of bolt, isn't it? I believe this is even a thicker bolt. Not sure. Let's look down to the... Let's remove this for a moment so you can just see the top of the tripod. There, the tri tripod top here. Look, this is big, sturdy, beefy stuff here uh, by comparison this looks it's an adequate little mount it's a cute little mount I'm not trying to diminish the Swift in any way it's a wonderful little telescope this just doesn't quite stand up to the quality of Takahashi all right let's look at the accessories here uh, it's pretty clear that these came from the same manufacturer the Takahashi Swift, nearly identical in almost all respects. I think the choice of eyepieces here is better with the Takahashi. They've got a Kellner 25 millimeter, not a beautiful eyepiece, but not bad and very functional. And a Kellner 12 millimeter, same story. Here they've got a Huygens, um, barely acceptable. A Huygens with a 20 millimeter focal length, a little bit short. And then this one with the Swift, <laughs> it's kind of a joke. It's a Huygen six millimeter eyepiece, obviously thrown in just so you can crank up the superficial power on the thing. But um, with the Barlow, this has got a 2X Barlow, which is probably acceptable. Now you've got a fairly good set of eyepieces with this thing and the Barlow and throw this away. It's useless. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Swift Model 838 telescope. Thank you for watching.